Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to a very special Cape Conversations. Ooh, where am I? Well, I'm going to let you know. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, I'm so excited. I am in the basement, the bowels of Heritage Museums and Gardens round barn, which is what I call it, although it is the car museum. Anyway, I'm sitting here with the president and CEO, very fancy title for a very nice person, and <laughs> Scott Putney. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Melinda? I'm good. So tell me, here we are, we're sitting here. This is where you work on the cars. Yes, we are in the auto storage area. Mm -hmm. This is where we keep all the cars that are not on display right over there in the car museum. Yeah. And so we have a collection of cars here that are actively stored, but also actively worked on mm -hmm. to make sure that they, uh, that they run, that they're well maintained. We have a group of guys called the car guys who come in. <laughs> They're all super experts in nice. car mechanics and car history. And they come in every Wednesday to work on a specific car that they choose every season to do what we call reactivate, oh. which means it hasn't been running. And their whole goal is to get it to be running. Wonderful. So they've actually been working on one of our cars today to I get see. it back and running. I see. Well, the one behind you up on the lift, which you don't have to turn and look at, is my favorite, the bow tail. I know, I know. Sexiest car here, people. <laughs> and, and oh, if I would have lived in that time period, I, I probably would have been, it was part of the depression, wasn't it before yes, the depression? Yes. I probably would have been in the depression, wouldn't have been able to afford it. But boy, wouldn't that have been a great car to be driving, I think. It's yeah, beautiful. Thanks. So they're trying to get it back driving again, I guess. Yes, they choose one car every season yeah. to reactivate. Nice. And nice. we're making our way through the cars that aren't able to be run, although we have a number that can be run. Right. Um, I just want to point out um, right behind you is uh -huh. President, President Taft's white steamer. He oh. was the first president to ever have a motor car. Wow. Everyone before him had horses and carriages, mm -hmm. um, but he enjoyed driving or being driven, actually, right. with what he did. He was and a big guy. He was a big guy. <laughs> and this is a big car. Yeah. And he would sit in the back seat and his driver would sit in the front steam wow. seat and the cars run on steam. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Which was quite an innovation. I was going to say, and now we're going to be on electricity. Yep. We're yeah. going back. <laughs> in fact, back in the day, they were experimenting with three different kinds of fuels, mm -hmm. steam, gas and electricity. And it wasn't really clear which one was going to win out. Really? Uh, obviously, ultimately, gas did. Right, right. But we're actually returning to the roots. Um, we think funny? electricity is new Isn't for powering but cars. Not, but but we not. were experimenting it with it right back in the day when cars were first invented. Right, right. Well, the cars with the one, just the one um, handle that would guide them, not like a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those I know were electric, mm -hmm. I believe, way mm -hmm. back when, yep. so in the beginning. Um, that's really interesting. And as I said, he was a big guy. So this is a really big car. <laughs> it is. It would hold a lot of people now. It'd be like an SUV, right? Exactly. <laughs> but open air. And yeah. it was used in parades and for yeah. formal occasions as oh, that's well. That's great. That's interesting. So, and we've coming out of the, um, the, the, we're coming out of this plague, this, this, we've all been, we're getting all getting vaccinated. What's happening with this COVID and you? And this. And sure. Here. Well, let me just say last year, we were really fortunate that we have our outdoors. Yeah. And so even though our museums were closed for part of the season, we were able to welcome lots and lots of people to all of oh, our outdoor great. offerings. And so this year, um, mm -hmm. we, when we opened, which was our normal time, mm -hmm. which was um, right toward the end of April, we were able to open everything at Heritage, nice. our museums, our gardens, our gift shops, cafe, everything. Oh, so great. we are in full bore right yeah. now. Yep. Um, and, and we have been thrilled with how many visitors are coming to visit us. Um, I just got some numbers today and we're actually doing even, 2019 was a super year for Heritage and we actually have more visitors so far. Is that um, right? This year, wow. I think everybody wants to get out. Everybody wants to socialize again. Right. People want to see their friends. They want to get back with grandma and grandpa and their cousins yeah. and yeah. do things like come to Heritage where there's something for everyone. Right. And you can start to make those family memories again. Sure, off sure. Of Zoom. So, so, yeah, well, yeah, get <laughs> off of Zoom. Jeez, Mary and Joseph is horrible. Um, I just, I did a Zoom yesterday and it didn't work. And I was like, ah, so um, I'm very glad that when it will finally go away forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know it'll mm -hmm. ever go away forever. 
I just wish well, it's a nice tool in our tool belt belts. And actually, we're continuing to do some virtual programming oh, well, that's over good. Zoom. We, yeah. we experimented with, with it last year and uh -huh. actually worked really well. Oh, good. And so we're finding those that we're continuing to do our hydrangea success series with uh -huh. our uh, curator of hydrangeas, Mal Condon, have been super, oh, super nice. popular. And we're actually able to serve more people. Oh, that's so great. if people are wondering if we're still doing some of these very successful and popular things, we still are doing so all some they virtual have to program. Do is, but all Look they at the have website. To, yeah, just go to the website and there it all is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yep. That's great. So uh, so you're open now. The hydrangeas are, are coming up. I know, but they're gorgeous. I mean, a lot yes. of them are gorgeous now. Yes. I mean, and some of those strains that you have and the colors are yep. just amazing. Totally yeah, we're amazing. in the Rhodey Festival right now, the Rhododendron yeah. Festival. Um, we have thousands and thousands of rhododendrons and they are in peak bloom right mm -hmm. now. Um, they'll still be blooming into June. Mm -hmm. um, and so folks can come and see the sort of the end of that festival time. Right. And then the hydrangeas are going to come into full flower early, early July, early to mid July. Right, right. So there's and you have a whole special place for hydrangeas. We do. Now. Yes. And what is so amazing about that because we did a show a couple of years ago about it uh -huh. with the horticulturists for that yes. area and uh, with somebody from the South, I think, North Carolina? Yes, someplace. we have Can some I... experts that come in yeah. to do yeah. that. Yep. Um, we're all the different varieties because yes. you know we're used to seeing there's blue ones and there's white ones, but they're all different kinds. We have over 120 varieties of, of That's hydrangea amazing. here. amazing. A um, couple of things about hydrangeas. We we will be doing our hydrangea university again oh, wow. this year, which is a one day super intensive um, learn, you know, learn on all different topics um, with super well known experts. And we're going to do that online again this year. Wonderful. Um, we're, again, last year we were sold out. We were able to have more people mm -hmm. than than we can even in person. So we're going to do that again. But um, all the tours and you know other things obviously are happening in person. And we're right. also opening um, the expansion. We expanded one of our hydrangea gardens. It's called our hydrangea test garden. Oh, and sure. You know, yeah, you know I know that. where it is. Yeah, yep. it's where we test new varieties. Right. We work with growers and nurserymen, and we test new varieties to see how hardy they are here on Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. And so we um, opened a whole new area. I mean, it's open to the public now, but we're going to do a formal opening of it. So folks that haven't been here in say 18 months or so, we'll find even more hydrangea gardens oh, here, here that's this wonderful. season. Yep. That's wonderful. And you also do a river of flowers that I've always thought was yes, so beautiful. Yes, that's beautiful. This season, um, it's past. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, it will but be- it's so pretty in We'll spring. be replanting it in the yeah. future, so it will be even more vibrant. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's our bulb river. Yeah. And that season is over. Yeah. Um, but you can see pictures online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now we're just coming into soon. There'll be daylilies coming out, um, the hydrangeas, and then all the perennials. We're actually right. having a festival uh, in August called the Pollinator Festival, because now we have the McGraw Family Garden of the Senses, mm -hmm. which is another place where we've planted right. many, many per, uh, perennials and pollinating uh, plants that attract pollinators. And mm -hmm. so we do a whole week festival around that. That's wonderful. There are other aspect, other parts of heritage that are planted specifically with pollinators, lots of native plants. And um, so we show those off then. You also have an area for people with disabilities. Yes, we do. Thank you. Um, the, the McGraw Family Garden of the Senses right. was designed and is to be what's called universally accessible mm -hmm. with very, um, not steep grades, very gentle grades, mm -hmm. wide pathways, um, areas where people in wheelchairs or strollers can pull up to get close to mm -hmm. the flowers and herbs, mm -hmm. etc. We have a lot of stone walls that are right here at um, kind of waist height. And mm -hmm. so you can just come right in and look at the oh, plants there. Great. And then we just put in something really fun there. It's called a tactile map. It's Ooh. a three-dimensional map out of bronze. It's oh, um, designed nice. for people with low vision so they can Kind of explore the garden before they actually walk it to understand um, basically how to be safe there. That's wonderful. And, and so that's another way that we've um, added a new element to the oh. McGraw Family Garden of the Senses. That's wonderful. You guys are thinking of everything. Well, we try, I mean, our aim is to serve people of all ability levels, all ages. Mm -hmm. And so we like to be real thoughtful about that and make sure that people are accessible or have access to nature and can connect to nature. So. 
You still have, obviously, you still have the car museum, which yes. is here, which I still and will always refer to it as it's the round barn. It's fabulous, <laughs> yes, and that's that's what it is. So, so I know, but I, it's like old habits die hard. <laughs> um, and then you also have the art museum way up the other end, right? Yes. That's and in a, between was the military museum. Right, and but let me talk to that that building. Um, we're calling it now the Special Exhibitions Gallery. Excellent. And in that gallery, we have a really fun, um, very interesting and informative exhibit called Let's Play, New England Toy Stories. Oh, nice. And it's we're, it, we can even be more hands-on this season yeah. than last season, but it shows examples of toys that were manufactured or handmade in New England. Um, because this was a real, um, a real crucible for toy manufacturing and continues to be. Sure. Um, Parker Brothers, Milton Bradley, and Hasbro all were located in New England, continue to be. They're all Hasbro right. today. Right. Um, but a lot of um, people, again, experimented with doll making and, you know, um, sports things. And sure. we have examples from Native American um, people from this area and from... Um, you know, not only the major ones, yeah. but the smaller manufacturing. Sure. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that's like people fun. of all ages. You can you'll go in there and you'll see something. Oh, I remember that. You'll say to yourself, <laughs> and you'll say to all the people with you, "Let's play it." <laughs> so, uh, and then there's the carousel in the art museum. Is yes, that, and that's still called the art museum, or did so that name change? So it's called the Art and Carousel Building um, yeah. at the moment. And I want people to make sure. I want to make sure that people know this. Um, that building is closed right now because mm -hmm. we're renovating. Um, remodeling one of the galleries there to mm -hmm. add classrooms for our school that we have here. Oh, sure. Our 100 acre school right. is for kids in, in pre-K um, and when this remodeling has happened through grade two. Right. And so um, that's what we're doing with that building up there now. But it will, as soon as that remodel is open, it will reopen again to the public mm -hmm. for the carousel building. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the 100 acre school, that is just something that has taken off, isn't it? It really has. Um, we are fully enrolled for next fall. Nice. There might be a couple little places here and there, but we're enrolling kids from pre-K through first grade wow. for the fall. And um, people, I mean, the children love the curriculum. They spend several hours, two to three hours mm -hmm. every day outdoors. Mm -hmm. And the heritage grounds and our museums, the Car yeah. Museum, Let's Play, other the um, outdoor Lego sculptures are there classroom, the extension of their classroom. How wonderful. They have a classroom and then they also do um, explorations and um, discoveries out on the, on the heritage grounds and museums. Is it a full day or a half day? So it depends on the grade. Um, preschool is more flexible. Kindergarten yeah. is all day. Um, so it depends on the grade level. And you still have the, the hollow. Choose. Yes, and we still have a hidden hollow and they yes. spend, again, now with COVID opening things up, they're able to go back down to hidden yeah, hollow. In nice. fact, Hidden Hollow was the inspiration for the 100 Acre School. The Hidden Hollow is a big two acre yeah. outdoor play Gorgeous. area with a tree house and a um, Oh, it's so much fun to go area. up in that tree house. Yeah, <laughs> and the kids, and kids, all kids are welcome there. Right. Um, but when that was built, parents said, we'd love this right. experience, kids connecting to nature. Could you please do that year round? And that's yeah. when we opened the school. That's wonderful. It's been enormously successful, especially also these days yeah. as um, people well, especially during COVID, you know, smaller classrooms, more, more. outdoor time. Um, sure. Fabulous teachers, a wonderful sure. curriculum. Sure. sure. It's worked well for sure. our community, too. Right, right. I was going and to say. And with more and more people moving to Cape Cod because it's such a great place to live. <laughs> yes. Don't try um, to buy a house right now. Leaving, and they're leaving cities to move to Cape Cod. You know, we have right. this fabulous asset that we can offer to our, our new families right. and our our existing families. Right. Well, and, and as we all know, the real estate market has gone crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So here I am. I've moved to Cape Cod, right? I can work anywhere I want to live. I can work mm -hmm. from there. Um, I've got little kids. Gee, should I become a member? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what I suggest actually is bring your family. Mm -hmm. um, explore if they're little ones. Make mm -hmm. I mean, go all around, but make sure you go to Hidden Hollow. Yeah and have a wonderful time there. Make sure you leave enough time mm -hmm. because people often stay for more than an hour, an hour or two down there. Um, it's very relaxing, it's mm -hmm. social, mm -hmm. um, and the children can just explore and entertain themselves. Um, but then on the way out, I bet 
that you liked it so much that you want to become a member. So you just go right to the gift so shop? So you go or? right to the gift shop and say, I had this many people here today, um, subtract that from the price of membership, and I'd like my membership. Wow, so that's So you can great. actually do that. You can nice. have a day and then decide, oh, I want to use that to buy a membership, and so sure, it's a great deal. Sure. I recommend that. Oh, that's great. That, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that, that you could do that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Absolutely yep. wonderful. Well, so for the community, I mean, this is such a, you know, it's a jewel. It's a jewel for Cape Cod. Oh, thank you. Oh, it is. There's yes. no doubt about it. I, I mean, we've got the National Seashore and we have Heritage. I mean, what could you ask for, right? Exactly. Uh, I, I, and the Shining Sea Bikeway. I yes. also think that is another Love that. beautiful, beautiful place as well. So what do you have on tap? What do you got coming up? Oh, What's gosh, gonna lots keep of us things. going here? Right, right. So we're back to our programs again. Last year we had to suspend all of that right. and events. Right. A couple right. of things. Let me start with cars. Yeah. So we have a new exhibit in the um, in the car barn mm -hmm. from carriage to classic, how nice. automobiles transformed American culture. That's opened every day. That's wonderful. Um, here in the storage area and up in the parking lot, we have a really fun program, which you need to register for, mm -hmm. um, called Gearhead Garage. And it's for people who really want to get under the hood. Yeah. They know they might know something, they want to learn more. And right. all of our car guys will come out. They yeah. are here to uh. tour people and show them what project they're working on on a car inside the um, inside the storage area. Mm -hmm. And up in the parking lot, um, and also in the museum, they are um, providing interpretation and lots of information Wonderful. about the cars. And then they will choose a particular couple of cars to have outside and they will also drive them around. Gearhead Garage is a lot of fun. Need to buy tickets online. And if I could just say, uh, beyond you, I can see to the outdoors there's a glass door. And I just yes, saw Gary Cooper's car drive by. You did? I think it was the yellow and green one. Oh my goodness, that's our Duesenberg. Yes. Out for a spin today. Today's Wednesday. and uh, <laughs> It's out for a spin. It's out for a spin just today. Just so you know, they're not, they didn't seem to be stealing it. They just seem to be. Actually, if around. you do come, I can't mm -hmm. promise it, but if you yeah. come on Wednesdays, um, we exercise the cars. Oh, that's great. And so folks can perhaps see them yeah. tooling around. Yeah. Um, so Gearhead Garage is terrific. Um, we're doing, I mentioned Hydrangea Festival coming yeah. up with Hydrangea University, Pollinator Festival with yeah. other family challenges and mm -hmm. wonderful programs. We're doing Wellness Week in September. Oh, wow. Um, and then a number of uh, like fundraising events and things like that. Right. I also want to mention um, every Thursday evening, we are open late. We call it Third Thursdays. That's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. We open till seven. Yeah. And we have a series of, um, if you wish, I mean, you can just come and walk and have a lovely time or you can bring your children and we can offer you family challenges and scavenger hunts and fun and and sort of relaxing and chill ways to I enjoy see. to enjoy heritage. Um, we have a, um, a couple of free days, free to the community. And oh, so nice. I would say check the website for that. Mm -hmm. That's free to sandwich residents with proof of um, residency, mm -hmm. um, people over 65, and mm -hmm. veterans. Um, all of those mm -hmm. days are free. Wonderful. Um, which is terrific. Um, we have, um, in early June, um, I want to make sure people know about the car show because it's back. Oh, we have our that's annual, so, yeah. yeah. The oh. annual auto up show. On the, up on the grounds? Up on the grounds near the um, Special Exhibitions Gallery. And actually right, right outside the car barn. We're going to do two different oh, wow. locations nice. this time. Allow everybody a little more space. Ah, wonderful. This is, um, you have to pre-register your car yeah. if you want to enter it. And also you have to pre-register if online to get a time ticket if you want to come that day. Yeah. And I, you know, we've been doing time tickets since COVID happened. It's for a day. And it, you, know, you choose the day, you buy right. it online in advance, not a particular time, but a particular day. But for this particular event, it has to be a time on June 12th for the car show. If you want to come and just cruise and look at the cars, you do need to register in advance online for one of the two time slots. So it's a little bit different, but we've found that that really serves our public well and right. make sure that we don't get ever too crowded right. beyond the limits that we've supposed to have had here. Right. Well, the MFA does the same thing. Yep. You know, they're doing the same. I mean, they're doing it now. I don't think right. they've always done it, certainly. Um, but we however, found it looks, I mean, it, we found that it works nicely, actually. People um, don't like to be so crowded anymore, I don't think. Exactly. I think that's right. And it keeps yeah. our capacities where they need to be. Yeah. But also it helps you plan. Yeah. And you don't, except for the car show and other special events, you don't have to, but we really strongly encourage people sure. to register online. And if you're a member, you can come anytime you wish. Yeah. yeah. More or less, depending, programs yeah. are separate, but any right. other time you can right. come anytime you wish. Now, 
you said you're doing a wellness. Is that mm -hmm. you're going to do like Tai Chi demonstrations? Exactly. Like I don't okay. know exactly all the different okay. um, elements, but you know things like meditation, mm -hmm. Tai Chi, forest bathing, wonderful, um, other things like that. I know. I always um, laugh about the forest ba bathing. Yeah. It's called going for a walk in the trees. Is what it's called, really. It is. It in is the old days. Really working on connecting to nature yeah. and just being really intentional and thoughtful I know. about it. I yep. know. It's just. Yep. But don't you find it amusing? Come on. I find it amusing. <laughs> and I, absolutely. I want to do a shout out for a couple of events too. Oh, for sure. Fundraising absolutely. events because yeah. oh, I will yeah, yeah, yeah. tell you we throw a great party. I know you do. Um, we do. <laughs> I used to go to them a lot. I know you ago. do. <laughs> and you, would, you would be the life of the party. I know that. <laughs> no, no, um, I have fun though. We have a couple of bocce events. Oh, bocce wonderful. and barbecue. Bocce and Bellinis. Um, nice. One is I in like June. the Bellini. I, uh, yeah. Cool. One in June. One in um, July. Yeah. The best thing to do is look at the website. Those yeah. are fundraising events, but. Uh, they're a hundred dollars a ticket, and mm -hmm. so we really aim that to be, you know, appeal to a, sure. a wide audience. We'll be playing bocce and having good food Fun. and drink. Um, and then on July seventeenth is our biggest fundraiser of the year. I, I want to mention that it's called the Rhapsody in Bloom, <laughs> and uh, instead of being in one place under a tent with music and dancing, we're spreading it out oh, around nice. Heritage. It'll be going from uh, three different venues. Nice. But all within easy walking distance yeah. of one to the next with jazz music at every stop and tapas style food and lots Wonderful. of fun socializing and little activities for our now, guests. Did this used to be called something else? We used to call it our gala. That's right. And That's it's just right. we, we changed the name this year because we don't want people to think that it's exactly the same as we've done ah. it before. We've kind of de what's the word? We've deconstructed the pieces yeah, yeah. and made it a little bit more of a progressive event right. through the evening. But it's um, the same weekend that we would typically do the gala. Sure. And the purpose is to raise funds for heritage sure. to support our mission. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. And are you at full capacity with staff? Are you looking for staff or are you pretty well set yeah, we're, now? We're, we're pretty well set. Good. Um, I think if anybody's interested in, in staff positions though or volunteering, check our website because sure. we do post every everything there. Yeah. And as we're opening up and having more people, we, you know, we might be looking for people here and there. Sure. And so I would strongly encourage people to take a look wonderful, at the wonderful. website and see what's what's available. So Anne, yes, here you are on Cape Cod. How long have you been here now? About two and a half years. Two and a half years. And I think you fit right in. Oh, thank you. I love it here. <laughs> I love it here. So so many wonderful people, so many great people like yourself. Who well, help us not me, but spread the word. what I like is the fact that you ride around on a Vespa. I do. I have my little <laughs> mint green Vespa. I, I ride around I think on that's it. the best. <laughs> First time I ever saw it, it was like, what? Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, um, it's fun. It's fun. It's sort of vacation-y. And yeah. there are lots of great places you can get to quite easily right. in our little village I and, know. and uh, environs know. of Sandwich. And traffic here can be brutal sometimes. Mm -hmm. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, in downtown, in sandwich, downtown sandwich, it can be bumper But there's to bumper. a lot to offer for people here in Sandwich. Oh, and for sure folks is. that might not have spent time here, right, right. Um, Heritage can take a good chunk of your day, but there are other places as well to visit well, that can round out your day. You could you could come, spend the night at the Daniel Webster, yep. right? Yep. Or any of the B&Bs here. Yep. There's lots of those. And you can come here, right? Yep. And spend most of a day. day. The next day you can get up in the morning, have a lovely breakfast somewhere and go to, to the, the, glass, glass the glass museum, museum the you can tour Beach. all the different, yep. you know, all the different little museums that mm -hmm. are here, and, and good little gifty shopping, and, and some lot, wonderful yep. little um, bistros yep. and places right. to eat in the village. And uh, that night, go to uh, the Brown Jug and have a pizza and a beer. There you go. <laughs> okay, I okay, think we're we on. got the plan <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So um, anyway, so you are. Uh, you've been here two and a half years. What do you see for the future of Heritage? Do you see it thriving? I, Absolutely. It seems to be thriving we at the moment. We are thriving. We are thriving right now. Um, we're thriving, I think. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's a, it, there are lots of um, layers of that question, but I believe sure. that we're thriving because we have a lot of different things to offer. Mm -hmm. In the pandemic, we could lean into the outdoors. Right. We also, also have our museums. Um, we're also doing some really fun partnerships, and I want to mention. I want to highlight one because it's very exciting. Sure. We're working with um, a group called Smoke Signals, which is led by um, Steve Peters, who is a member of the Wampanoag, oh, sure. the Mashpee Wampanoag yeah. tribe. I know who and he is. I don't you know, know him. him. Yeah. yeah, he's terrific. This is the second year we partnered with him. Last year we did an exhibit about the Wampanoag history, and this year we have a total experience. We have built a 
almost full scale model of something called a WE2, oh, sure. W E T U, yeah, right. which is a traditional summer dwelling right. of the Wampanoag people. Right. And we have this right at Heritage. Oh, that's and wonderful. And it was so much fun to watch it. We'll be putting a video actually up on our website so people can see, you know, that. Um, fast action motion of how it went up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the um, Steve and some of his um, uh, colleagues did that right as we opened so the public oh, could watch it great. be built. They went out into the swamps and they cut um, saplings mm -hmm. um, that are perfect for this particular project. They came back, they stripped them of their bark, they built them, they've got this beautiful dome shaped right. um, dwelling. Right. And then indoors are um, beds or benches with um, skins on them and a fire. And lots of interpretation also mm -hmm. around how people live. This would oh, have been 400 wonderful. years ago. What a great, which what is a terrific. Great and then that group, whoops, that group and other um, members of the tribe are doing a full scale Wampanoag day wow. later in July wow. um, for um, sort of a total immersion and learning about right. culture in the past, but also in the present. Right. And so right. we're very, very excited to work with them. Excellent. Excellent. So what's working? I think um, partnerships. Yeah. Um, being outdoors. Yeah. Um, and keeping yeah. an eye on the future. Yeah. Where are we going? Who and do you you're going to continue on on the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Sure. Am. This is my this is my swan song. This will be my last oh, meeting. No. I'm off. I've been on for almost. Oh, my gosh. I've been involved for probably 20 some years, but this will be my uh, the last one miss coming you. up. Well, I'm the only one that speaks up to everybody, and makes everybody laugh. So that's, I know <laughs> that's, the that's what you do. It's a very God. serious group of people. Let me tell you. Um, but you, uh, you are going to add so much to that as well. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy so. that. Actually. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It's fun kind of being in the know of what's going on. It's fun actually. being in the know. Um, I really appreciate that we're able to participate in sort of issues and policy yeah. issues. Policy is um, the big thing. Yeah, and yeah. also. Um, you know, Heritage, we have 100 acres yeah, and we can really model, you know, lots of people are interested in climate change and how we can adapt. We can model that. Right. And we can interpret that to our visitors. Right. Um, one of the, I want to mention one more thing if that's sure. okay. But one Absolutely. Of, one of the things at Heritage right now that people are just loving, we never could have predicted how popular this would be. Um, right. One of the top three things that are photographed at Heritage mm -hmm. is our little electric self-powered lawnmower we have oh. two of them it looks like a Roomba oh my god and it um, we have two of them one out in one lawn and one out in the other and they're oh, orange great. and they're about like this they yeah. look like a vacuum cleaner and they just mow the lawn all day by themselves that's, that's wonderful and it's fascinating but that's when we th when I think about how do we model and interpret sustainability this is one example uh, absolutely because people it is. say well that's interesting sure, sure I'd love not to pay for gas yeah. and pollute the air with right you know right right fumes right. and um, maybe and I wear think myself about that. out Exactly. <laughs> and believe me, we still have plenty of work for our horticulturists. Yes, I know. Nobody's you do. losing a job I, over this. Yeah. <laughs> not, not over the Roomba not mower. A, right, exactly. Check out our Facebook page. There's I, lots of them. Yeah, so I should mention yeah. our website www.heritagemuseumsandgardens.org or heritagemuseums.org. Excellent. That'll get excellent, you there. Excellent. Excellent. And you are on Facebook, and I'm sure you're on Instagram. All the social media. Yep. yep. Great. We have a fabulous new website. Makes it really easy to purchase tickets for everything. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, you've been a delight as always. Oh, thank you, Melinda. You thank too. You. Thanks for visiting. Yeah, I'm it's glad fun I'm to here. Have you here. I'm I know. really glad I'm here. I, I truly am, and it's it is it's always it's a gem. As I said, it's the jewel of the Upper Cape. Thank you. And um, you are so necessary for what Cape Cod is and what Cape Cod is about. Well, we tell the um, stories of this region. You sure do, and you do a great job at it. Well, Thank thanks, Melinda. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All righty. Ann Scott Putney. Wow. She is the president and CEO of Heritage Museums and Gardens. What a wonderful person. She is so down to earth and so likable. Oh my gosh, they're lucky to have her here, and we're lucky to have her here in Sandwich. You heard all about what's going on at Heritage. It's going to be great fun this summer, clear into the fall. So go to their website, heritagemuseums.org, take a look at what's going on, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversation. Mm -hmm.